This is the audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Assignment of engineers at the lower Delta Labs has become almost impossible. In six months, we've gone from a volunteer surplus to a critical deficiency of qualified personnel willing to accept assignment. Increases in both pay and benefits have done little to help this situation. Through exit interviews as well as the weekly Delta Medical Brief, it's become apparent to everyone that the rate of sudden and unexplained mental illness is way beyond acceptable levels, even for Mars. They're derogatorily being called sub-delts up here, and I have a feeling this attitude will spread to other parts of the UAC. End of log. Emergency power only. Systems down. Operations suspended. This is the audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Disciplinary Action Report 40C-8, responding to Mars City Administration request. Delta Labs 1 is currently addressing a problem concerning theft of security equipment. Four members of the security detail assigned to the Delta Labs have been reprimanded with three others under investigation. It seems caches of weapons, armor, and ammo have been discovered in various places throughout the Delta Labs. We've located some of the missing equipment and have information that we hope will lead us to more. I have a team investigating storage room 21D with security code 298, where I've learned stolen items may be located. I hope to recover all items and find all personnel responsible. End of log.
power only. All layers of operation disaster core, 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 offline. All of safety procedure, all orange. are with me now. Yeah. 
Attention, reactor core online.
This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Ruff, dated October 23, to what journey is futile. We have exhausted all known forms of hope, and hope supplies his way to change the great reality of nature. I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling. Approximately 80% of all extraplanar participants exhibit signs of mild neuroses within the first 48 hours after returning from their expedition. Within 72 hours, 75% of patients exhibit extreme signs of paranoid delusion and violence. We have isolated these cases in hopes of finding the pathogen, as yet. Uh, there. Oh, thank God. You're not one of them. I thought everyone else was gone. I... I was part of this. I helped them. The madness of opening to another dimension. Look, I, I don't... We don't have much time. We let it through. The evil. The protective stabilizer on the portal just failed after Petruger took the device. It, it was an artifact we had found in the ruins. He took it into the portal. And hell followed him out. You have to help me first. I'm going to try to get the teleporter systems running again. The areas are destroyed around us, so it's the only way through this part of the complex. 
You need to find me a working plasma inducer. It's all I need to get the teleporter working. You can look for it in operations. I have a security clearance. I'll unlock some doors for you. There. We don't have a lot of time. Please hurry. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. denied.
Alon systems deactivated. Medical report 16-8, date November 2nd, 2145. Patient 0432, Private Steve Jensen of the UAC Darklight Armor Corps Division, expired yesterday. Process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. I'm 
Reanimation process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Medical Report 16, dated November 2nd. Audio log for Phil Wilson, medical technician, the Delta Labs. October 23 and 25. Today I witnessed the third test of the teleport in the three weeks that I've been here. The volunteers are becoming a and it isn't difficult to see why. They all come back screaming like loons. Demons, fools of blood. Real fire and brimstone. 
At first, I wasn't paying much attention. Just doing my job. But how the hell? I met him my first day here. This guy chews up rocks and spits out crap as tough as they come. Having to sedate him and drag his drooling body to the isolation, it's really freaking me out. I'm gonna put him for a transfer as soon as I can.
As requested, the following is my initial feedback on my first trip through the portal. Private First Class Frank Cinder stated October 15th, 2145. Yeah. I don't know exactly what he did. Obviously, I survived the first trip. I feel no worse for the wear. I, I, I'm not feeling any of the symptoms reported by the others who have gone in before me. I'm at a point where I'm still trying to process everything. Thankfully, the place looks deserted and devoid of any life. Division. Start securing forward positions and we expect to start sending out the mapping droids at the same time. First, I've got a really, really bad feeling about this. I don't understand what we're doing there or, or what we hope to prove. EFC Sears, signing up. You surprised me. I'm glad to see you. I would have hoped they would have sent more than just one guy, though. I've been studying one of the specimens we brought back to see if there's something physiological that would be a weakness, a way to stop them. I found nothing so far. Haven't had enough time. I'm gonna stay here and keep looking. It's the only thing I can do. There are combat supplies in the storage cabinet in the next room. The code is 624. I hope you can use it. Delta Complex Stasis Chambers. This is a 
Rosen study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens appear to be carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which is complicated internal studies. Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility, as well as the ability for some specimens to manifest and control cores and plasma masses. Mass 
spectrometer and radiation scanning methods have failed to provide reliable identification of the molecular makeup of this artifact. The object cannot be weighed. Uh, this is the audio log of research director Larry Bullman. I've been examining the glyphs in the tree shaped artifact, which some are calling the soul cube, and combined with previous research data, it is my conclusion that the device is. opportunity to lie with another power of forsaken faces bad enough without having to watch the lights flicker constantly it's just well never mind back to the task at hand what I've deciphered so far is a bit I must say disturbing it seems that when one has possession of the artifact if one inflicts damage or possibly kills another being it extracts power from that event somehow now, once a certain threshold has been reached, the artifact has the ability to kill anything you attack with it. How you attack with it, I'm frankly not certain, indicating that the artifact is autonomous in some way. To date, I have only deciphered about mm, two-thirds, give or take, of the markings, but my initial glance at the rest of them indicates it harbors some far greater power. As you know, at this time we have not seen any reaction from the cube, and it has withstood any scanning, abrasion, or other test beyond picking it up and examining it. I suspect that just like the civilization that constructed it, its capabilities are diminished to the point of being useful only as a paperweight. End of lock.